I want to talk about that quote, mother of all bombs that was dropped in Afghanistan Thursday, uh, April 13th. And there's an article by Alex Emmons from theintercept.com, mother of all bombs never used before due to civilian casualty concerns. And this is going to go into uh, why going back into people from the Bush era didn't want to use this bomb. It's a 21,600 pound weapon and it was developed over a decade ago and it was never used due to the concerns of possible mass civilian casualties because it has a, a blast radius that's a mile long. And, you know, Trump is just, and some of his people are like, yeah, awesome, Trump. You know, he said on the campaign trail, I'm going to bomb the shit out of ISIS. And nobody, and, and people on the far right are like, yeah, he's talking tough. This is how you deal with ISIS. You know, fuck the terrorists. And it's just, I don't think people, it's again, more of this oversimplified America rides in on with the white hat and blows people up. And when civilians die, we create more terrorists, right? I've said this before, I'd say it again. Let's say your next door neighbor has a meth lab or they're doing some criminal shit. They have a meth lab and they're doing awful stuff. Human trafficking, it's horrible. And instead of the cops like bursting down the door and arresting them, they just shoot a rocket from miles away and it blows up and it kills some of your family members and then leaves another friend of yours without a limb and another person you know is blind in one, one eye. Are you gonna be like, yay, we stopped the crime? Or are you gonna be like, whoever sent that rocket I didn't like the meth lab, but this is fucking awful. I've lost friends and family. That's what we're doing. We wonder, like, this war on terror, has it worked the way we've done it? The regime changed, the rocket attacks, and now we're doing this in Afghanistan. And it's just like, we'll go into what they said. The massive ordnance air blast bomb, Moab, um, the Pentagon said it used the weapon on an ISIS-affiliated group hiding in a tunnel complex in the Nangarhar province. The group, according to the Pentagon, is made up of former members of the Taliban. Now these tunnels, as I've said, they we helped build them when we were supporting the Mujahideen when they were fighting the Soviets in the 80s. More of our just ridiculous, um, tangled up Middle Eastern thing for resources and access to oil and pipelines. Um, when the bomb was first introduced, the Pentagon said it was designed to terrify America's enemies into submission. The goal here is to have the capabilities of the coalition so clear and so obvious, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld said in 2003, that there is an enormous dis uh, disincentive for the Iraqi military to fight against the invading coalition. Uh, Mark... Garlasco, former senior targeting official in the Bush era Pentagon, told The Intercept on Thursday that the weapon was never put to use due to collateral damage concerns. We just do it anyway. Yeah, I bomb the shit out of that. will show them like more. Just okay. <laughs> and this was the guy, by the way. Um, he was the, Galasco was the Pentagon's chief of staff when his job was finding Saddam, hunting him, finding him, and killing him. That was his directive. And they were like, they considered using it in Iraq in 03, but were like, no, it's too much. So it's, this is his quote, it's got a huge blast radius. I mean, it's beyond huge. Garlasco said, I'm sure the collateral damage estimate is going to be fairly extensive and you're not talking about just blast and people within the blast. You have to consider secondary and tertiary effects of the use of the weapon. So looking at things like how does that affect the water supply to people? Is it going to destroy power within the area? So if you don't have water and power, are you going to be happy about the people that sent that bomb? Um, while the Moab strike has attracted far more media attention, the U.S. and Afghan government forces have killed increasing numbers of people lately. According to a U.N. report in February, airstrikes from the Afghan government forces and the U.S.-led coalition killed nearly 600 civilians, almost double the number in 2015. 
and have been repeatedly accused of bombing residential areas. Well, here's something that's weird. So we only see footage of the, chem the so-called chemical weapons from Assad. And again, let's say they actually happen. Let's say those videos of, the chem of Assad using chemical weapons against his own people. Let's say those videos everyone saw last week, those were real. Okay. How come we're not seeing any videos of the 600 civilians we killed in February? There's no videos of that. How come we're not getting the videos from Yemen and Afghanistan and, uh, and Syria? How come we're not seeing any of those videos? Because it's weird because the, um, the emotional reaction from the chemical weapons and the children, as I said, friends of mine who are left leaning were like, wow, Graham, but there's chemical weapons on the kids. Look at the kids. All right, let's show all the kids that our rocket attacks have killed trying to fight terrorism. Let's show all of those, put all those videos up, put them all up equally. Here's the awful stuff ISIS is doing. And then here's us trying to stop ISIS and killing civilians. And let's see what the American reaction would be. Oh, I know what it would be. Hey, why the fuck are we bombing them? So let's stop that. That's why they're not out there. And that's why the corporate media isn't telling you this. And that's why there's only, it's, it's, it's kind of, someone like Graham, wow, you, you and, Jimmy Dore and Kyle Kalinske and Young Turk, only a handful of you are really out talking about this. Is it, is, it, is it cool? No, it's terrifying. Really? Guys doing shows in their houses and apartments are more on the pulse of what's going on and asking real questions than, the, than CNN and Fox and MSNBC? That's scary to me, man. And then when we talk about this and put it in our titles, our shows get demonetized, which is a form of censorship. That's fucking terrifying. They want us all to just drink the Kool-Aid and go war, war, war. We got to stop bad Assad. War, 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 guys. I've been in war zones. They're fucking horrifying. It's awful what they do. I fed kids through a barbed wire fence. I was in an operating theater in Bagram, Afghanistan, one on a 13 year old boy, they were putting his jaw back together. It's in my documentary, Afghanistan. I was in the operating room. They let me bring a camera in there. He got hit with an IED. And then there was a, a nine year old boy who they were prepping for brain surgery because he was playing in a minefield. It's the most heavily mined country on the face of the earth because of the war with the Soviets in the eighties. I've seen it. It's awful. It's fucking horrifying. That's why I applaud Tulsi Gabbard for saying, uh, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa on the war. Everyone's all war, war, war. Let's see this up close, man. You sit in an operating theater and watch a kid. You listen to the parents cry. You do that. You sit there and go to the 22 funerals a day from the vets that kill themselves because of PTSD, because of what they endured in Iraq and Afghanistan. You go through, go, go through that. And then get back to me and yeah, bomb the shit out of them. War, war, war. Get the fuck back to me on that. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching this show. And I'm going to keep speaking the fucking truth because the corporate media won't. So support the Patreon so that I can keep doing this because YouTube doesn't want me to.